I'm Jen McKinney. I'm the Head of Rail Infrastructure for Manchester Metrolink. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the current operator maintainer and tell you a bit about the challenges that we face. They do include some of those passengers. They are part of our uh, uh, travelling public. Um, but I was going to focus on the uh, engineering challenges of the assets under my remit, so I'll give you a bit on uh, track and the overhead line, uh, and then talk about some of the developments we've got underway and the next steps. Um, so, Keolis Amy uh, commenced as the operator maintainer for Metrolink in July 2017 uh, with uh, an up to 10-year contract. Uh, Transport for Greater Manchester are the owner, and as Paul told you in his great presentation, um, it's now the largest tramway in the UK. So, Keolis and Amy um, are... Uh, the, we, we've got the operator component, which is uh, Keolis, so they're an international um, passenger transport business. And then Amy is a uh, leading supplier of uh, consulting and infrastructure support services across the UK and internationally. Uh, as a JV, we've got um, three on the go at the moment. So we've got um, Metrolink in Manchester. Uh, the first uh, joint venture was Docklands Light Rail in London. And as of this weekend just gone, uh, we add Wales and Borders to the mix. Um, it's, uh, this is the uh, first um, operator maintainer contract where the whole network um, comes under uh, one, one contract. Uh, and as Paul was telling you, it's been significantly expanded um, over the last few years, coming with a number of challenges. So we've now got seven routes um, and 93 stops, 120 trams, over 40 million passengers a year. Uh, CAM, which is Gaelis Amy Metrolink, have got over 800 staff and counting. We're uh, continuing to grow. We've grown a fair bit in the first year, and we will continue to do so to meet the challenges over the next few years. We operate out of two depots, so we've got... Let's see if I can make this work. Uh, we've got Old Trafford, which is the new depot that was built by MPT, and then we've got uh, the uh, existing one that's at Queen's Road. And we're uh, anticipating the Trafford Park Line extension, adding six more stops um, to the line in 2020 and having 27 more trams uh, coming in uh, to support that. Um, so the challenges. I tried to find a good photo that would show you the embedded street form, which is certainly where we get a lot of the challenges. Um, the overhead line. And um, I haven't got it in this presentation, but if anybody wants to know about our vegetation challenges, uh, there's certainly a few, so come find me after. Um, so the key one from a track perspective has actually been the challenges we've had about around gauge corner restoration welding. Um, so we had a rail break um, in the embedded uh, street section in A-Town, which is on the uh, first um, city crossing, uh, shortly after the contract commenced with a rail break through the, the entire section. Uh, British Steel kindly undertook um, some analysis for us, so they've been able to uh, uh, demonstrate that there was um, some in issues uh, with the process, with the inadequate placement of sacrificial uh, final beads. Um, so, uh, as a result, uh, we've actually ended up suspending the process, which comes with a number of challenges. Um, because that means we've got more likelihood of needing to, to re-rail. So re-railing in the uh, city centre sections uh, has quite a, bit, quite a big impact. Uh, not only does it mean that you've got a number of uh, additions to your inspections regime, uh, be it uh, on foot or uh, with ultrasonics and the like, uh, but you actually require disruptive access. So this is one of the ones where our, our team was working diligently last Christmas to uh, replace the rail. Uh, luckily, that's where uh, the second city costing comes into play because then you've got an alternative route if you aren't able to utilise Christmas Day. Um, so our actions, um, as I said, were to suspend the process. Uh, there's been analysis undertaken, and we're working on the next steps um, to reintroduce the processor and look at alternatives, um, because it will be one of the uh, uh, key uh, requirements to our rail management strategy as the contract goes on. Um, now, I would be remiss, uh, as overhead line comes under my remit, not to tell you about some of the main challenges we find um, operating uh, Metrolink as a contract. 
um, in part because it ends up having quite a significant impact to the public if you do end up having one of the events. Uh, luckily, in this example I've got where we, we had a, a feral um, failure on a span wire in the city centre, uh, that was um, another reason why having the second city crossing is a big asset to us, because if the original route through the city centre um, isn't accessible, um, and in, in this uh, particular incident we lost it for the whole day, we do have an alternative to being able to keep Manchester moving. Um, so we had a number of follow-up actions um, to determine that there was uh, fatigue hidden inside the feral, and we're trialling some all, uh, alternatives and looking at renewal process going forward. Um, we've had quite a number of challenges uh, over this very hot summer we've had here in, in Manchester, particularly uh, on the Eccles line uh, with Kevlar paraffin rope failures. Um, so there's uh, some hidden components which uh, have been degrading uh, and of course there's a number of challenges uh, on this particular one. It was over the uh, park life weekend uh, which made things quite exciting keeping, uh, keeping it going whilst we had uh, the additional, uh, additional people in the, uh, in, in the city for that event. Um, we, uh, we, we, had, uh, we, we had a few incidents uh, over this uh, summer which causes a number of challenges and have had us really look at um, the key renewals that are needed as part of uh, the upgrade. We've, we've in, in the first year of the contract, have a, a bit of a renewals holiday and we're looking at where the key requirements are um, and looking at our strategy uh, and what's going to fit um, to help us uh, with the challenges uh, going forward. So looking at different options for the future, like auto-tensioning. Uh, key... Um, to the development, so getting our asset management strategy right. Um, so that's been uh, a big part. Uh, our, our lovely bid team coined the term brilliant basics, but it really is about getting the basics right. Um, the plan, do, check, act, so that we can move into uh, the uh, data analytics world that really, uh, uh, that really was integral to the uh, performance we had on the contract I joined from that Amy had with uh, the underground. Um, We've uh, been doing a significant amount of uh, work to determine what our statutory requirements are, standards and specifications, looking at our asset management strategy and uh, asset criticality and uh, risk management being pretty key, um, leading us to uh, implement um, or having a centralised asset management team and um, holding quite a number of uh, asset criticality workshops uh, so that we could determine um, our enterprise uh, risk management framework. Uh, with, uh, with, with quite a significant amount of work going um, to looking at um, key planning that we'll need going forward, uh, looking at um, spares and logistics and the uh, maintenance procedures and uh, not a small amount of work um, having integrated two different organisations looking at our maintenance task instructions. So it's been really key that we start to uh, build on the, the right team. Um, central to uh, CAM is the core value chain, which is really system-based theory uh, of having interdisciplinary teams uh, working to develop processes. So this is where we're very lucky as an operator maintainer that we can work so closely together. I'm trying to get the right skills and competencies into the organisation so as we uh, bring people on, we're fit for the future. Very importantly, looking at our uh, supply chain and uh, strategic procurement to make sure we can uh, deliver on our, uh, on our challenges. Uh, looking at making sure that we're uh, re acquiring and recording the right data. Um, our uh, big step forward is we're working towards remote condition monitoring of inspections and surveys. Uh, looking at upgrades to our asset management sy uh, system we use uh, agility um, and, uh, and, and training our staff on the use. Uh, and that's really to, to allow us to move into a world where uh, data um, analytics can be key and we can shift towards um, having uh, reliability-centered maintenance and risk-based -based maintenance. And we can utilize some of the great tools that uh, uh, we've got available to us, like uh, the Cobalt Whole Life Cost Modeling System that Amy used on uh, Network Rail. 
Um, and the key next steps, um, the, uh, the exciting steps forward we're, we're taking at the moment, um, are looking to introduce uh, remote condition monitoring. It really, I think, is key to us uh, delivering on the developments uh, that I've talked about so that we can uh, work on the challenges, uh, looking at the automation of our track measurements, so geometry, uh, rail wear, ultrasonics, and the digital capture of images. I'm very keen, as I talked about the challenges with overhead line, that we look at uh, how we can automate this process as well. It's key not only to us being able to move away from being quite reactive um, to being preventative in our maintenance, but also looking at, um, with the city that we're trying to keep moving and up the uh, tram frequency, how we can uh, reduce the impact of, of works that require isolations and therefore have to take sections of the line out. Um, gives us the opportunity to move towards a, to a more 24-7 world in the future. And then um, ride quality and... Uh, we can't forget the trams in all of this, uh, although I'm more interested in them keeping the uh, pantographs in check. Well, thank you very much, and if you're interested in finding out any more, just uh, come talk to me after.